Hi everyone, it's Graham again and welcome back to my channel. So today I am here with my November reading wrap up. I read eight books in November, didn't finish them all, I finished six and I carried over two into December. So there are two of these books that I'm still currently reading. Um, without much further ado, let's dive into the books. So as always, they're not in reading order, they're just in the order that I had them in for the thumbnail photo. So yes, that's how I roll. So the first one that I've got here is my favourite book ever of all time, Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. Um, I read this as November's pick for Christie Fest, which is hosted by the lovely uh, Julie, the Hungry Bookworm, and Lil, of Lil's Vintage World. Uh, this is my favourite and it was obviously it was November's pick. November is my birthday month so this was like a, a lovely birthday present. As always with this book it just it, I loved it. I absolutely adore this book. Uh, a group of people are stranded on a train in the middle of Europe somewhere and one of them is brutally murdered and Poirot just happens to be one of the passengers and he steps in and f solves the, the crime and saves the day. Um, very twisty. Uh, all the times that I've read this, I think in the last sort of 20 years, I've maybe read this six or seven times. This is my sixth or seventh read through or seventh or eighth. I can't remember. I've read it quite a lot, but I always seem to find something that I didn't necessarily notice the, the, the other times that I've read this this time I, I I found more um and I just appreciate this book so so much I love it and I just love Agatha Christie um but this one just it's my favorite and I love it so the next one that I have to show you is this one it's the panda the cat and the dreadful teddy and this is a parody and it's by um Paul Mayers uh this was absolutely hilarious um there's not many of these pictures that I can show you because it's very um, sweary, um, so that's probably one of the, the safest ones that I can show you. But it's very much in the vein of the um, the boy, the mole, the horse and the fox, I think. If I've got that wrong, I'll pop it down on the screen. Um, but yeah, this was, this was brilliant. It's so, so sweary. It follows um, a stuffed panda, to panda toy, a teddy bear and a cat and um, their clear dislike for one another, apart from the teddy, who apparently loves everyone, but everyone hates the teddy um, and themselves. It was fabulous. And if you get a hand, a hand to this, if you get a hold of this, um, I would suggest that you pick it up and give it a read because it is a really good way to pass a couple of hours. And the artwork is lovely too. So the next one I have is um, this. This is a play and it's called Murder in the Cathedral by T.S. Eliot. Um, this tells the story in play form and it's like a sort of poetic play. It's written in sort of uh, poetic prose as well as being a play. Um, this was written in the mid-1930s and it was um, performed at, I think, a Canterbury Festival somewhere. Let's have a look and see. Yep, so it was um, the Canterbury Festival uh, in June 1935 and this is a sort of reimagining or retelling of the assassination of Thomas Beckett in Canterbury Cathedral in past times. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't the greatest fan of this. It took me a while to read even though it's quite slim, it's very slim, it's barely 100 pages. I just, it felt quite stuffy and I didn't want to give up. I persevered with it but it did take me quite a while and also when I was reading this I was in bed with my back pain so I was on quite strong pain relief um, so maybe I didn't take it in as fully as I could have done but yeah maybe read it again in the future but not the biggest fan. So the next one I have I listened to this as well as read it at the same time so I listened to it on audible and I listened and I, and I read it physically in some parts as well. Uh, this is Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde by uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, the, the reason that I read this, and I've never read this before, and I really enjoyed this, um, but my husband Duncan and I went to Glam's Castle on Bonfire Night uh, to see a one-man uh, stage show of this, and it was fantastic, as was the book. Um, 
yeah, classic horror story. If you don't know, it's uh, a doctor called Dr. Jekyll. He creates uh, an elixir, a potion, a tonic, and he drinks it and becomes this violent, evil, grotesque uh, version of himself or someone else. But yeah, classic horror story. And I really enjoyed this. I would probably read this again. So the next one is a book that I started reading in November and I am carrying it over into December and I really want to read this. This is one of my most anticipated books of 2021. The only reason that I have popped it aside when I did is because I was in bed with my back pain and I was on really strong pain relief so I wasn't really taking anything in. So I may start this again. I got about 70 pages in and it kind of annoys me because I was I'm, I was really looking forward to this. I shouldn't have picked up when I did, when I was ill. This is A Three Dog Problem by S.J. Bennett. Um, and this is basically Miss Marple and the Queen in one. Um, yeah, I don't know much about it. Um, I just know that it's a murder mystery set in Buckingham Palace and the Queen steps in and investigates. But I do hope to finish this in December. Um, I may just start reading this again because I absolutely loved the first book by this author in this series, which was called The Windsor Knot. And again, the Queen as Miss Marple saving the day. So yeah, I, I, I really want to read this because I, I was so in anticipation of it for this year. But yeah, pain and medication. So a book that I had carried over from October into November because I was listening to it on audio, I finished and then I listened to it again with my husband Duncan and we both adored this book. The Spirit Engineer by A.J. West. I loved this. Duncan loved this. This is a based on a true story of a man named, I keep forgetting the man's name, um, William Jackson Crawford. And in the 1900s, he is tasked with um, trying to um, debunk uh, spiritualism and spiritualists. But he begins to think that it's it's true and all the things that he tries to to do to debunk it don't but this is so twisty it's so full of little pieces of information that you don't necessarily find like find or notice the first time round so listening to this the second time was my was my second time but it was Duncan's first so i knew what was coming and i and i sort of picked up on all the little the little kind of comments that were made by characters and I thought, wow, that really, that, yeah, that's what that means. And that's what, they, and I love that kind of thing. Um, and I think Duncan got slightly annoyed with me because I was saying, oh, that's a clue. That, that's a clue. Did you hear that? Did you get it? Um, but yeah, if you get your hands on this, definitely read it because this is a glorious book. And I cannot wait to see what's coming next from A.J. West because his writing is just amazing. So the next one that I have I think this was probably the first book that I read in December, not December, we are in December, in November. Oh, maybe one of these days I'll start a video and I'll get through and I just won't make a mistake. But today clearly is not one of those days. But this book is The Women, the Mink, the Cod and the Donkey and it's an affectionate parody. Um, and who is it by? Because the author's name is not on the front. It is by Marjorie Swash and the illustrations are by Emmanuel Santos and the illustrations are very lovely and they're very sort of reminiscent of the other one which I always muddle up the title of. Um, so this was brilliant and I loved it. This basically is a woman who is living through lockdown and she is desperate to find a pub that is open because she wants a glass of wine and she bumps into a plethora of animals. And uh, yeah, the donkey looks suspiciously like a certain um, ex-president. So yeah, and it's another one that if you get your hands on it, definitely give it a go, because it's hilarious. A great way to pass an hour, two hours. You won't regret it. And the final book that I have is the second one that I'm carrying over into December. This was uh, my November TBR pick from the TBR jar that my, my husband Duncan created for me. 
um, and it is The Witch's Vacuum Cleaner by Terry Pratchett. Um, I'm just under halfway through and I'm really enjoying it. It's really funny. Um, very sort of surreal um, and kind of unreal, if that makes sense. But yeah, fun and flighty and crazy and I just, yeah, I don't know why I've, I've taken so long or I am taking so long, but there we go. Um, yeah, so <laughs> hope to get that finished and uh, also A Three Dog Problem by S.J. Bennett um, because, yeah, I need to. Um, <laughs> that's the end of my wrap up for November. What are you reading? What have you read recently? Um, is there any? Is there any? Are there any books that you are really looking forward to reading um, to finish off the year or going into next year? Let me know down below and we, got, we can have a chat about it. But for now, I will say thank you so much for watching. Whatever you're doing, I hope you have so much fun doing it. Whatever you're reading, I hope you love it. Stay fabulous, be amazing, be yourself, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye-bye.